Uh, who would have thought I could have devoted an entire video to that? <laughs> Well, I would. <laughs> so this is uh, this is the tapered sprue that I use. Um, it's I don't remember how big it is. I know the end of it is about eight millimeter. I'll put the measurements up right there, length, upper top, top bottom uh, diameters. And uh, I was given this sprue by uh, Martin over at Old Foundry Man, and I have been using it uh, religiously. <laughs> as it were, uh, since I got it. And it has served me very, very well. Uh, every I have not had a casting fail as a result of not getting metal through this thing. Now today I want to talk about the importance of a tapered sprue and what it really means. First of all, <laughs> when I first started, uh, I was told to use one of these guys, a turkey baster <laughs> as a tapered sprue. And I was told you want to choke the metal. You want to, the metal will come in quickly and you want to choke it at the bottom to slow it down from entering into the mold. Well, we want to slow the metal coming into the mold. There's no question about that. Um, we don't want metal coming in at a high rate of speed. And if you look at um, this book, if you don't have this book, you need to get this book. Uh, it is the Mini Casting Handbook by Professor John Campbell. Uh, there he is right there. <laughs> Great book, easy to understand. Even I understand it, okay? So, um, and today we're going to talk about this section right here, sprue. This is section 4.4. Anyway, I would rec highly recommend that book. If you don't have it, get it. Where was I going with all that? <laughs> oh, yeah, speed of much metal enters the mold. The book will here will tell you that we want to try to keep the speed of the, the velocity, the velocity of the metal, not the volume, but the velocity of the metal under one meter per second. And um, we're going to show a demonstration here. I'm going to show some calculations that I did, and, and we're going to pour some water, and we're going to look at that and everything. It's amazing to me that with my sprue, which is my cope is about that big from here to here. In this distance right here, I can achieve one meter per second velocity. That, that distance right there, that's crazy. That's crazy, but that's what it is. So <laughs> one meter per second, how, how fast is that? Well, let me just show you. Here, my fingers are a meter apart, right around a meter apart. You can see how fast that metal is flowing to get across here at one meter per second. So let's go outside. We're going to pour some water and then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to talk about um, some mathematics. Ugh. Now, you know, if it's me, it ain't going to be mathematics. It's going to be more arithmetic and it's going to be very, 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 very simple because I can't do anything beyond that. And then we're going to talk about, we're going to do a demonstration, which is just, if this doesn't convince you to not pour down a big open sprue, I don't, nothing will. This is the way, this, this is a great demonstration. And I, again, I ripped that off directly from Professor Campbell. <laughs> so let's go outside. <laughs> well, I'm back. <laughs> I didn't want to pour water all over my floor. All right, so what makes water fall that way, that, that sort of funnel-shaped fall? And it always does it. You can do that in your own home. You can dump water out and you will see it come out and it'll be wider at the top and it will narrow as it falls. And then finally it will start falling and it looks very parallel as the stream has thinned out enough. It will go into a kind of a parallel mode. So you have this parabolic sort of shape. Well, the reason for that is gravity, right? Gravity is a constant. If you're here in the States, it is 32 feet per second squared. If you're anywhere else in the world, it is 9.8 meters per second squared. So what that means is here in the States, after one second, you're falling at 32 feet per second. That's, how, that's your rate of speed at which you're falling after one second. 
Well, if you fall for two seconds, by the time you get to that second second, you're now falling at 64 feet per second, okay? So you're falling <laughs> even faster. If you go for three seconds, that means you are falling now at 96 feet per second. So you're accelerating, you're getting faster. After one second, it was 32, then 64, then 96. Same is, same is gonna be true with meters, right? You're gonna go from 9.8 meters to 19.6 to 29.4. Ugh. Same thing, right? You're gonna fall. And it doesn't matter if I fall that far, if I fall that far. The rate of acceleration is the same. It doesn't matter how far, it's that rate of acceleration that will be constant. So I thought, well, okay, this is my sprue. How fast, I tried to figure out how fast is my metal falling through my sprue. Now my sprue is 15 centimeters tall, but I really only pour, because my cope is only this tall, about seven millimeters uh, of fall in my sprue. So I went out to a site uh, called the Splat Calculator. <laughs> the Splat Calculator is based on how, how much energy you're gonna have and how fast you're gonna be falling when you splat against the earth when you free fall down to it. So that's what the Splat Calculator is, and I'll, I'll link it down below. Uh, and you can put your own numbers in, you can, get the, you can get the same values, right? So I went in there and I said, okay, how fast will I be falling after one centimeter, 0.01 meters, right? Got that number, put it in a spreadsheet. Uh, I went through and did that for 10 centimeters and I put those all in this spreadsheet here that you're looking at. Then I got to thinking that the amount of fluid that I can move through a pipe is sort of dependent on a couple of things, right? Uh, if I have a pipe that's this big and I wanna move that much water through it in one second, then I'm basically moving one of these, whatever you wanna call it, one volume per second through that pipe. If I take that same pipe and I shrink it down, make it smaller, call it half a spot, half the size, right? But I still have that same volume, that one volume of water, and I wanna move that one volume through the pipe in one second's time, then what I have to do is I have to double the, the velocity of that water because I can't move it through at the same speed, otherwise I'll only get half of it through, right? Half as much pipe, we're gonna get half as much fluid through. So we have to move it through twice as fast to get it, um, uh, to get all the fluid through. All right, so I'm thinking to myself, what if I take those velocities that I just got off of that spreadsheet in that website, and somehow I could turn that into a sprue model, right? Maybe I can model um, what this means. And so what I did then is I took the velocity that I have and uh, I essentially divide the volume by the, by the velocity and that gives me a diameter. Okay, now that may be the absolute wrong way to do things because I am not a mathematician. However, um, it worked. <laughs> And if you notice on my spreadsheet over here, you'll notice that when we get to uh, one, uh, a one kind of a, a, a velocity of one, that the volume, the size of the pipe is one, is, or the, the diameter of the pipe is one as well. So I wanna move one volume through pipe, and if I'm moving at one per second, my pipe's gotta be one, okay? Uh, and you can see that play it out in the spreadsheet. So I thought, okay, well that's working pretty good. So then I took those same numbers and I went over to my modeling software and I decided what if I modeled a collection of cylinders that were all based on those diameters that I just created. So I did that, I created this right there, right? A list of um, uh, uh, cylinders. And I thought, oh, okay, well that's, that looks very interesting. And I smashed them all together to look like that. And I thought to myself, man, that looks really familiar. <laughs> and it looked just like this. All right, so we're able to successfully model water falling, okay? I mean, we're pretty darn close. Now, my model is not exactly correct. It is hot out here, um, and I am sweating like you wouldn't believe. Anyway. That is important to keep in mind. As we move into the next demonstration, I want you to keep this whole notion of 
This is how it falls. This is how the, the, the fluid is going to fall. And this is how big the pipe is that needs to contain that. So let's move into the next demonstration. And I am, <laughs> I am going to shamelessly rip off Professor Campbell. Um, I saw this video and it, I'm going to see if I can find it. If I can find it, it's going to be right there. Uh, and I'll put a link to it down below the whole thing. Uh, this is an insanely, what would the guys, the Guinness guys would say, brilliant. That's right. It is a brilliant, brilliant demonstration. So, and here's the other thing about it. When, when you, you go watch his video, you really should go watch his video, first of all. Fresh Campbell looks like he is about half my size. About half my size. And I think he's probably close to 20 years. He's probably right at 20 years older than me. He does this demonstration and he puts as much air in the bag as I do. <laughs> it's humbling. <laughs> anyway, here's the deal. So we're gonna take this empty plastic bag. and It's empty, right? I've, I've, I've evacuated all the air out of it. Now, I'm going to put, I'm going to just open the end here. I'm not gonna even open it. I'm just gonna put it over my mouth and I'm going to exhale all of my lung capacity into this bag. All right, well, there it is. How impressive, right? Well, now there is, there is some air in there. You can see that. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna hold it like that. Something, because I'm gonna put it side by side. Anyway, there's that. All right, you see that? Not, it's, it's humbling. <laughs> all right, we're gonna do the same thing again now. We're going to pull all the air out of here. Now, instead of me doing a closed system where it's just my lungs to the bag, I'm going to open up the top of the bag uh, just slightly, not a lot, just a slightly, and I'm gonna breathe in exactly the same way, except I'm going to allow other air to come with it. Now, look at that. That to me is incredible. That is, is that Guinness guys again said? Brilliant, brilliant. That's right, brilliant. What happens here? What is happening is with the closed system where I was simply blowing my air into the bag without any sort of air coming in around it, we saw how much volume I got. We saw all I got was the air from my lungs into the bag. What uh, we just saw in that one, when I had the top opened up and I blew in, as air is coming in around, as i putting that stream of air down through this bag, air is coming in around it. And you're thinking to yourself, well, what does this have to do with metal? It has to do everything with metal. <laughs> because when we pour our metal, and we pour our metal down a sprue that is wide open, what's going to happen? If we pour our sprue down a hole that's bigger than the metal can fill, we're going to be sucking air in just like that bag. We're gonna suck air down into our castings and we're gonna have porosity in our castings. Uh, you can't help it, it's going to happen. And that's why you want to fill your sprue, you wanna have a tapered sprue that naturally mimics the shape of falling water or falling metal um, so that we can contain it wholly and we can keep that sprue full and not having air coming in around the side. And that is the best demonstration I have ever seen on why we want a tapered sprue. As promised, here's the gratuitous pour. I don't lie, it's not, it's totally gratuitous. <laughs> Let's look at how the basin fills and we keep that sprue full the entire time. That's important, as we just talked about. Keep that sprue full. Open it up here. We'll see that, uh, yeah, pretty decent looking plaque we made here. It's more of the, how nice it looks. <laughs> anyway, there's the basin, the ridge, the tapered sprue that we just used. There you go. <laughs> I, I hope you learned something today. I hope you uh, have started the gears turning a little bit in your head about why we do some of the things we do. Now, there's a lot of other parts that are involved here. It's not just the tapered sprue. There are other things uh, that we need to really consider. 
Uh, we need to consider the runner and gating system as well, and I'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, I didn't talk about the offset pouring basin, which is an important component of this as well. Uh, that will probably be a separate video uh, on its own too. Just, it's just too much to talk about in the time frame I've got that I'm trying to limit myself to this 10 minute window. So anyway, uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you have a great day.